All right, everyone, let's talk about 2020 and the top 10 sales that I had on Poshmark. everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Daniela and I am a clothing reseller on apps like Poshmark and eBay and consignment services like The Real Real. And today we are going to break down the top 10 Poshmark sales that I had in 2020. Um, this was a lot of fun to kind of go through all of my sales of the year. I had a lot of really great sales. Um, I had some not so great sales, <laughs> but I'm that's another video that we're going to be talking about at another date. But today I want to talk about the I want to start on a positive note and I want to talk about the top 10. Um, these range from January, actually I don't have any in January. Um, they range from February actually until December, December. I have notes. I feel like a real YouTuber um, having a notebook in front of me, like a real reseller YouTuber <laughs> with the notebook in front of me and all of my top sales. So that's fun. Uh, some of these were maybe not dollar amount the most impressive, but I was surprised that I was able to sell the item for that price point. So yeah, let's, let's dive into it. Uh, so the first sale of 2020 that shocked me, um, it was my first time finding this brand. Oh, and I'm gonna, I'm going to make sure I insert a picture somewhere behind me here so you guys can see what it is that I'm talking about um, but this item I found at Savers it was five dollars is my average cost of goods so if you've watched previous videos you know that I average the price of all my goods I don't um, take each individual price for each item I take the receipt I average it out and that's what I use for my cost of goods so this item was um, black label Ralph Lauren uh, herringbone skirt sold for $115. Cost of goods was five. So great return on that. Fun story behind the skirt. Um, it actually sold to a woman who has a YouTube channel, um, fairly popular YouTube channel. She is also a news anchor. Um, she does a lot of lifestyle type things in her state. So that was really neat um, that I was able to sell a skirt to her. So that was my first sale. Do you guys have experience selling Ralph Lauren Black Label? Because I will share my experience with it. Um, I don't have a lot of luck selling it on my own. I typically send it off to the real real, but for whatever reason, I sold this myself. And I don't know if it's because I wanted to try and see if um, if I could do it. I did, <laughs> but most of my Black Label Ralph Lauren goes. Um, right to the real real and it does sell there and it does sell fairly quickly so uh yeah that that was my first sale I'm gonna check that bad boy off the next sale that i had now i sold um this brand four or five times throughout the year but this was just the first one of the year that i sold in 2020 and it um yielded i believe the highest profit margin which is why i chose it um it, it was a pair of rothy's the flat in scooter red really pretty. I found this at the thrift store. They cost me $7 and it was my second time finding Rothy's. So my first time finding Rothy's was in 2019. At the end of 2019, I want to say it was like November, December, I found two pairs at um, a Savers in another state. Uh, they were the same size and they were in the men's section because they were a women's size 11 and they must have thought that they were men's, but they're not. Uh, and I grabbed those those sold for $125, I believe, each because they were brand new. They just didn't have the box. Um, and they were the the white sneaker, which is the Rothy's that I like wearing. I like wearing the sneaker version of the Rothy's. I don't like wearing the flats. I tried it. If you have flat feet like me, it just doesn't work. They're just not comfortable. But the sneakers are very comfortable. I do want to try the Chelsea boot too on my list of things for 2021. Anyway, back to the sale. Uh, so I sold those. I sold them for $90. Cost of goods was 7 so great return on that. That was my highest Rothy sale of 2020. Um, not my highest sale. Highest 
uh, profit that I yielded from the sale. I did sell another pair for $100, but I paid more money for them. So uh, that's why we chose these Rothy's. So that was good. So now you're going you're gonna to notice... You're going to notice something. Both of these sales were in February. My next sale was also in February. February was one of my highest um, months in 2020 for profit. I had three really high months, and February was one of them. After this next sale, all of my sales are September. I'm sorry, August, September, November, and I don't have a December. Because... I mean, I sold a lot of stuff, but nothing that would warrant to go on this list. So, yeah, interesting, right? Hmm, well, that's because of what was going on in the world. So that March, April, May, June, July <laughs> mark, I really wasn't making um, any really high grossing sales. So that's fine. That was just the climate of the world at the time. But it's just interesting to reflect back and look at that. So my next sale, this was also February. And this is a brand that I, again, have never had luck selling myself. I've sold a few pieces in 2020 of this myself. Um, I This was my highest grossing as well, which is why it made the list. I did sell other pieces. Um, I think it was three other pieces myself. The rest of them went off to the real real. Uh, and that would be St. John. So I know when we all see St. John, we get really excited and we want to pick it up. And then, I don't know about you, but reality sets in for me and I realize I can't sell St. John myself at all. <laughs> but I always pick it up. And I think a lot of it's because it's usually priced fairly reasonably. If I can't sell it myself, I'm just going to send it in. Or if it doesn't excite me, then not a big deal. But I did sell these myself, which was a very proud moment for me. And they were um, a St. John Caviar, which is a black label and it black label and it says caviar on it. It's like one of their higher um, tiered. Uh, it's still the same brand, but it's like a higher tiered level of the brand. Um, so the St. John Caviar Alexa Milano Black Knit Pants. I was able to have a stock photo of it, which I think is what really helped make this sale um, because they were just a pair of black trouser pants hanging on a wall. Uh, and I think that really helped it. So I sold them for $120. My cost of goods was $4. So great return on investment there. Um, the three pieces that I sold, plus this, so four pieces that I've sold total of St. John in 2020 all went to the same buyer. Uh, she is a St. John lover. And whenever I find her size, I make sure I reach out to her and I let her know, hey, just found another great St. John piece. I think you'd be really interested in it here's the listing for it type thing. Um, and she's bought every piece. I don't know what this woman does. I don't know if she works in TV. I don't know if she's just a woman who loves St. John. I know nothing. I just know that she usually buys um, embellished tops that are St. John. I know that she buys um, specific like trouser type pants. So I have a feeling in her line of business that she typically dresses up or maybe she goes to a lot of events and she always buys these pieces from me. Um, she bought a two-piece evening gown. Uh, it was a gown and then um, like a bolero that went on top that was St. John. She just bought an embellished top, which I'm assuming she used for New Year's or for Christmas. And it was this pretty blue and it had all this beading all over it. It was gorgeous. She bought that from me. She bought these pants. So I have a loyal buyer which is why I don't necessarily not pick it up. But if, especially if I find it in her size, I am going to pick it up. I am going to list it and then see if she's interested in it or not. And if not, I just send it off. Because that's what I do with everything if I can't sell it myself. <laughs> All right, so now we have this big gap. We've had three sales in February. Great. February was a great month for me. January was really good too, but February was by far the best. Um, so those are those pieces. The next sale, so it's I, there's two sales in this. It was a bundle. And I'm counting it as number four and five, uh, even though it was one big sale. Um, it just made more sense for me to count it together. So I sold two pairs of Fleo shorts. So um, Fleo is a athletic brand that is highly sought after in the CrossFit uh, powerlifting world. 
Uh, so if you don't know, I was a competitive powerlifter for a long period of time, um, hoping to get back into that slowly in 2021, maybe not so much competitively, but just kind of get back into the powerlifting world a little bit because I do miss it and it was a big part of my life. Um, that's a video for another day. <laughs> but Fleo is something that is soft, sought after. They do have a lot of retired um, prints. They're known for their crazy prints, their bright prints, um, and they get retired. So what that means is they don't make them anymore. When they sell out, they're sold out. And if people really liked them, if people really wanted them, uh, they search for them online and see if they can find them. So this was a pair of shark shorts, and then it was also um, a, a geometric pattern type short. And both pairs sold for $85. I just said this was a bundle. That's a lie. It wasn't a bundle. It was the same person that bought it, but it was two separate transactions. They each sold for $85. My cost of goods on this was zero because these items were donated to me uh, by a friend. So my good friend Erica um, knows that I'm a reseller and she was cleaning out her closet and she had a bunch of athletic wear and she said to me, do you want it to resell? I really don't feel like listing it online. Um, I'd rather it go to you type thing. And obviously I was very grateful and I said yes. And I listed, I mean, there was Lululemon, um, the brand Coral, there was these Fleo shorts. I mean, there were a lot of really great items in this bag and I'm very thankful um, because my August and September numbers were really great due to me getting this free inventory. There were a lot of pieces, <laughs> a lot. And I've sold out of almost everything. I have a few Lululemon tank tops left and I have, um, I think two of the coral tank tops left, but everything else is sold. So when I don't have to pay for a cost for a good, and then my cost of good is zero. That's great. Um, so yeah, $85 pure profit. Um, yeah. So look out for the brand Fleo. Um, also side note, look out for the brand Alpha Elite. Um, I don't have it. Um, oh, I do have it on my list. So we'll get to Alpha Elite later, but keep those two brands in mind. Write it down as an athletic bolo brand. There are other ones that, as well, but these two brands that I'm mentioning um, are a heavy, they do have a heavy influence in the weightlifting, um, powerlifting, CrossFit, bodybuilding world. Um, yeah, so just write them down for future reference if you see them out in the wild. The next sale, uh, I don't know if I mentioned when the sale was. Did I mention that? I don't know. Uh, that was September for the Fleo shorts. So the next few sales, uh, oh no, let me go back. Why did I do this? So disorganized. I have an August sale at the bottom for whatever reason. So let's talk about the August sale. Uh, okay. I have found this brand more times than I think I ever thought I would find this brand. And it's a high ticket item. Uh, it's luxury. And I recently found three pairs of this brand. Uh, so if you follow me on Instagram, you might have a clue as to what brand I'm talking about. But for those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, which you probably should, because I post a lot on Instagram and I'm very engaging and I'm very friendly and I always answer my DMs, all my links will be down below. So make sure you check me out there, um, is Christian Louboutin. So lovely lubes. I love them. I don't own any. I thrift them. <laughs> They're never in my size. Um, but I, I have found this brand one, two, three, four, five, seven times, which is crazy. And it's not like I live in an area where there would be a ton of this, but apparently there are. Um, the first two brands I ever, my first two shoes, I'm sorry, that I ever found of this brand, uh, were extremely worn. They were at a local thrift store and they won $5.49 for them. And I thought they were fake because they were a vintage pair. So both of the shoes were really vintage. And I had to do a lot of research. Um, I was on different blogger websites. I was on a lot of authentication websites. I was trying to figure out if the font matched the vintage font of Louboutin. And they did. So to protect myself, I got them authenticated. This piece of hair is driving me insane. Sorry. Um, I got them authenticated and it hurt to pay the $30 to authenticate them, but necessary. So necessary because I ended up having 
a case opened up on one of them and they were trying to tell me they were fake and I had the authentication already in the listing. So all I did was just screenshot it and send it into the case and tell them, no, these were authenticated. I gave the reasoning as to why they were authentic. I explained the red sole and the color and the hue of it. I explained the font and the vintage font and the difference between the new font, blah, blah, blah. I went on and on. I won the case. Same thing happened with the other vintage pair that I sold. Um, case was opened. Poshmark ended up going in their favor, even though I had the authentication. I got a ding on my account because of it. I ended up going into this big brawl, not really a brawl, but I ended up having a discussion with Poshmark and explaining to them, like, listen, I got these authenticated. Here's the reasoning. It's vintage. It's not going to match what the new Louboutins look like in the way their font is. They've changed over time. I kind of went into that whole spiel with them. They took the ding off my account, but the return still came back to me. Whatever. I ended up relisting them. They sold that same day. So my first experience with lubes, it's not great. Um, then I found the pair again at a thrift store outside of my state. Again, they were priced at $349, so even cheaper than the first pair, which is the pair that I sold here in August. And then recently, I, have, I thrifted three pairs. Two I still have for sale in my Poshmark closet, and these are more recent styles. And one was a direct sale on Instagram to a lovely friend of mine. So the, this is my third pair that I sold. Um, and these were a leather peep toe, which you guys will see. And they sold for $2.95. This was a Google sale, which was great. We love a Google buyer. So if you don't know, Poshmark does show up in Google searches. And in order for your item to be seen, you really need to focus on your SEO. So I'll make sure to link um, a video on SEO that I have on my channel. It is very comprehensive. It's very beginner. It is not super detailed, but it's enough for you as a reseller to understand what it is you need to put in your listing to be seen on Google. A lot of my sales are from Google. Um, I do have in-app sales as well, but the majority of my sales are people that are coming from Google, creating accounts or just buying straight out on Google. That's how you know, that's how you know your SEO, your search engine optimization, your keywords are really good is that your item is being picked up by whatever keywords it is that you're including within your listing. Um, when I start my list with me challenge, I do plan on like sharing my screen and showing you guys what I'm researching and how I'm figuring out what keywords to use. So yeah, this was really exciting to me that they sold full asking price at $2.95. You must, you, you're probably thinking you priced them really low. The style wasn't um, something that was very sought after. It did have a couple of scuffs on it. So my cost of good was so low. I put my cost of good was five and it's because I averaged it out to everything I bought that day. Um, but the actual piece itself was priced at $3.49. So, yeah, that's my reasoning for pricing it at two ninety five. dollars um, The pairs that I have listed right now are priced higher, uh, and it's because they're a more current style. They're in excellent, barely worn condition, so a lot of that plays a role into it. But I was really happy with that sale, really, really happy. Uh, the next few sales here, let's see, we have two in November. We have another one in September, so let's go back to September because I missed... Um, the August one. Okay. So we're going to go back to the athletic wear. This is the Alpha Elite pair of leggings. Same deal with Alpha Elite. Um, these I found at the thrift store. My cost of goods was $5 for this. So again, averaged in with everything I bought that day. This pair was a retired style. And there's a fun story behind this. So I originally listed this on Mercari. I didn't even put it on e um, eBay and Poshmark because I noticed that a lot of listings were in Mercari. So when I'm searching for specific brands, whether I'm putting in keywords or I'm using Google Lens, I always take note as to where the most solds are located for the item that I'm going to be researching and listing. So in, for this specific brand, I noticed that it was a lot of it was on Macari. So I listed on Macari and I thought it was the Revival OG legging. So there are various styles of Alpha Elite leggings and I, this could be like a whole video on its own. Certain styles are more sought after, certain styles are, are retired, certain colors are retired, so all that plays into the value of the item. I think I had them listed at $50. Someone in Makari, who's a seller, actually messaged me and said, hey, now I don't have a following on Makari, I think I've sold like maybe 20 things total in 2020 in Makari. 
So, like, I don't have a presence there, like I would on Poshmark. Seller reaches out to me and says, hey, I just want to let you know, these are actually a retired color. They're called Guards Red, and they're extremely sought after. You should probably list them higher, $50. Do a Google search. You'll see that they've sold between 80 to 120 So I thanked her. I said, thank you so much. I pulled them off of Macari immediately because I wanted to do more research on it. Well, lo and behold, I found them. It was the Alphalete Guard Red Revival Lighting. And when, so go ahead and do a Google search of that after you're done watching this video or while you're watching it, if you're watching it on another device, not your phone or whatever. Um, and you'll see that those leggings, that color sells for a higher amount. So I listed them for $98. Within two minutes, two minutes, they sold for full asking price. No questions asked, sold. So I am so thankful for the woman on Macari who reached out to me and told me about the leggings and was so kind to give me that information because instead of making a $50 profit, I made way more, which is great. Sold for $98. So that was fantastic. Um, side note, the Fleo leggings, shorts, not leggings, also sold within like 30 seconds of me listing them. So if you know what it is that you have in your hands and you do your research, certain things people are just looking for all the time. And they're constantly refreshing to find certain items. So I, both of those sales were amazing to me. So the next one is from November. And uh, these were a retail arbitrage um, find. I found them I think someone might have returned them and I bought them someone else, somewhere else, but this establishment took the return. Something fishy went on with these. They were a pair of Doc Martens 1460 vintage, maroon colored, made in England Doc Martens. Not made in China, not made anywhere else, made in England. So when you find Doc Martens and they say made in England, automatically the price goes up. The Made in England, and I only know this because my friend uh, Jill educated me <laughs> on Doc Martens. The Made in England are more sought after. They are more rare. Um, they're constructed a little differently. They're a higher ticket item. So this was my first time finding Made in England. I knew nothing about it. I immediately text my friend Jill, um, and I was like, hey, I just found these. I paid up, I paid $40 for them, which was fine. Uh, I knew that the return was going to be good. Even if I only had doubled, I would have been happy with it. And she said to me, those are money. Let me explain to you what made in England means. So that's what she did. I listed them. They were listed for about, uh, I want to say like a month and a half. I, want, I listed them in late September, early, no, late September, late September, early October in that range. I think it was late September. They sold on November 6th. Um, and they were men's, which I tend to struggle with selling men's. I am more of a women's uh, clothing, accessory, shoe, bag seller. So whenever I find men's, I'm always like, eh, can I, can I? I listed them under women's and I listed them under men's, which I never do. But I figured I'd give it a shot. They ended up selling under the men's category and they sold for $150. Now I had them listed at $185, I think knowing that I was going to accept some type of offer on it unless someone decided to buy them outright. So I listed it at 185. They sold 150. The guy actually reached out to me and said, that sounded so rude. The gentleman <laughs> reached out to me and said, Hey, I'm really interested in these, but 185 is just out of my budget. Are you willing to come down to 150? To which I said, absolutely. And we had a sale. So that was great. It was my first time selling the made in England Doc Martens. I'm always in the hunt for Doc Martens, but when you find Made in England, it's a good day. I need to take a sip because this whole like talking for 20 minutes, it's a lot. It reminds me when I used to do lives and I used to have to keep drinking water. <laughs> All right, so let's check that one off. The next sale was a retail arbitrage flip again. So this is a brand I took a chance on. I was super nervous about buying these. I bought two pairs at Nordstrom Rack and they were a Burberry um, loafer. 
and they're called the Burberry Sudbury Black Suede Platform Sneaker. So not a loafer, sneaker, whatever. Um, I paid a hundred dollars, new in the box with the duster. I bought two pairs, so I spent two hundred dollars, and I got two pairs. And I was so nervous. <laughs> that was probably the most I've ever spent on a retail arbitrage flip, right? To buy two of the same item, same size. I was going to try it. I had never done it before. It was new to me. So I did it. I bought them in late October. They sold in the middle of November, right around like thanks, well, the week before Thanksgiving, like around there. Um, so they sold for $250. I had them listed at $299 and I accepted an offer for $250. I doubled my money. I was going to take it. They were, like I was going to take it and run because I was so nervous that they were just going to sit forever. So I do still have one pair left. Uh, they don't fit me. Otherwise, I'd be keeping them. But I'm going to relist them. I have faith that I can sell them. I sold one pair. The right buyer is out there. It's going to happen. Um, flips like these make me really nervous because, I mean, I'll pay up for things. But to drop $200 on just two items was a lot. Um but I took, I took a risk and it was worth it. it. It was worth it. And it brought different people into my closet and it still does because I still have another pair listed. But yeah, I don't know if that's a business practice that I will do all the time in 2021. I think in 2020, I felt brave and courageous to try all these different things and see what worked best for me because of the limited inventory I was able to pick up. Um, due to shutdowns and whatnot. So I don't know. Um, I will never say never to anything, but uh, this one definitely like gave me a lot of anxiety. So when one pair sold, I felt good about it. Doubled my money. Life is good. <laughs> All right. And the last sale, will, which will surprise everyone who's watching right now, because I'm like known for picking up like higher end things, you know, don't really do a lot of bread and butter. Like the most bread and butter thing I do is Madewell and J. Crew, right? So everyone thinks that I'd stay away from any mall brand. That's a lie. I do not stay away from mall brands because if I find, and I said this in my last couple of videos, if I find Michael Kors, Michael by Michael Kors, that is a great piece, whether it be a shoe or a leather, I'm going to pick it up. And my last sale is to prove that to all of you. I picked up multiple pieces of Michael Kors leather handbags at a thrift store one day. Someone donated their entire Michael Kors collection. Everything was either brand new or in like new condition, like hardly ever worn. I picked up about four to five pieces. This one piece was the highest ticket item that I picked up. My cost of goods was $10. All right, so we're going to put this all into perspective. My cost of good was $10. I picked up, I think it was four. It could be five. Somewhere in that range of handbags. There was other stuff I picked up this trip as well, but okay. All the other handbags have sold now, present day. This was the first one to sell. If you see this bag, and I'll tell you what it is in a second, grab it. So this is the Michael Kors Cobalt Blue Hamilton XL Weekender bag. Okay. It is a big, it's big. It's like, it's about this wide. It's about this tall. It's definitely a carry on of some sort, or you could use it as luggage. Um, it retails between that $400 mark, probably even a little bit more. It was a beautiful bag. It was beautiful. If I traveled and if I went places, I probably would have kept it, but I don't. Um, so my cost of goods was 10 you ready for how much it sold for? $195. Yep. Michael by Michael Kors, Hamilton Extra Large Bag. $195. I was shocked. And the amount of attention that this bag got was amazing. Like, like after like after like after question after share. I mean, it was constant. Until finally I was uh, negotiating with the buyer back and forth. And she's, you know, we settled on the price of $195. And she was thrilled, thrilled because she was going on a trip. 
um, to go see her family overseas. And she had been looking for this bag in the retail stores and couldn't find it. Her stores were closed near her. And, you know, we just kind of had this great discussion about it and it sold. So I, I think my biggest lesson out of all of these sales that I, that I had my top sales in 2020 is to just try different things and venture out and attempt to sell stuff and see what it sells for. And if it does well, try it again and try it again and try it again and, and, and just see, was it a fluke or was this, is this really something that people are looking for that you should probably keep doing within your business? So yeah, those were my top 10 Poshmark sales. Uh, my next video will be my five worst Poshmark sales. I'm only going to do five because I don't like negativity. That's the first thing. And the second thing is I don't want to dwell on the past, but I will use this opportunity to talk about my five worst sales and uh, reflect on them and come up with strategies to do better in 2021. So I hope this was helpful for you to see what types of items sold best for me um, or that surprised me or items that I typically don't find, but I listed. Um, so I hope it was helpful to all of you. And you know, let me know down below, what were some of your best sales in 2020? Have you looked at your numbers yet? Have you not done that yet? You probably should. So you can game plan for 2021. Yeah. So that is it for my top 10 Poshmark sales. If you like this video and if you like this kind of content, feel free to uh, hit the like button down below and hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you know when I release new videos because my goal in 2021 is to grow this channel and to provide educational, fun content to all of you. And uh, yeah, so I will see you guys next time. Bye.